blooded murder. And a complete total difference between self defense. But again, I could go in depth of what people want to say and claim. The Catholic Church can try to claim that Peter was the or that Peter was the rock upon which God built his church and Christ told Peter, You are the rock on whom I shall build my church. But here's the funny thing with that. Peter is not the foundation of the church, folks. Peter, the disciple of Jesus Christ, was not the foundation of the body of Christ. The foundation of the body of Christ was Jesus Christ himself. And this lie that the Catholic Church has been speaking and spewing for years is utterly foolish and despicable and honestly annoying because I'm tired of hearing the same despicable lies. Peter was not the foundation of the body of Christ. Jesus Christ himself was the foundation. And rock, in the context that it was used, used meant to say foundation. So, Christ was the foundation, not Peter, not the apostles, not any last one of them. And so I think it's quite ignorant that the, that the Catholic Church claims this. Quite foolish, honestly, considering the idols and the headwear. And the abominations that they actually have in their wardrobe and every other little type or every little thing that if you trace back, you can trace back to dang near the beginning of time. And within Egyptian cults and or occults and crap like that. So you all can only imagine why I get annoyed with stupid. exchanges of ionized plasma overhead. Our enemy's weapons are incapable of causing us harm. I might have to actually pull up a freaking list of documentation one day and just show you where the Catholic Church is 110% wrong. You know, Christians fled from the Catholic Church because the persecution that they were guilty of. So, you can claim the Catholic Church as part of the body of Christ, but unless you acknowledge Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and acknowledge that you do not need a man to be your freaking priest, and you do not need a man to speak to about your sins, then you're worshiping an idol, and you're not worshiping Christ, you're worshiping a man who is fallible. Okay, when Christ died for our sins and the innermost sanctum was tore apart and the gown was tore from top to bottom of the innermost sanctum, that got rid of the need for an actual priest because at that point, Jesus Christ himself became our most holy and most high priest. And this is why I get annoyed with humanity. I could go into a very deep, deep history of a lot of this. But I really do need to get off the topic. I really honestly do. So for now, we're going to look at the concept. Oh, crap. Of uh, Star Wars, because Star Wars has always been a great thing and always will be a great thing. So again, I'm not going to sit here and tickle your ears. If you want to have your ears tickled, then please get elsewhere because I'm never going to sit here and tell you that your lifestyle and your sin or your alphabet group is in the right because your alphabet group is just as simple and despicable and abominable as anyone else and probably just about everyone else as well.
are very efficient. Again. I can see why you were chosen to come here. This is a preaching I session. Originally surgical Something I don't really like doing, in all honesty. Like any other. I because I don't come. really like doing it. But you know I will, if I have no other choice to get the point across. What's that for you? I know. But I also know what it ends How up forgetting. And what you're forgetting is this. It upsets people. It makes them run and leave because I upset their little feelings. I'm not here to judge you, but what I am here to tell you is, well, God's already judged you. God's already judged every single human being on this earth as we live right now. So on honestly, it's up to you to accept salvation and change the outcome. And it's up to me, as someone who speaks and preaches the word of God, to realistically spread the message, spread the good news of salvation, and the consequences of your refusal. And so many churches refuse to want to talk about the consequences of the people's refusal. They would rather leave out the entirety of the book of Revelation. I've encountered more churches in my lifetime who refuse to talk about the book of Revelation because they fear it, because they don't understand it. The book of Revelation is to be an enjoyment, and a joy, and a hope, and a good thing for the future of the church. But so many people are so foolish and ignorant of the scriptures that they don't understand what the scriptures of the word of God actually mean. I've already told my wife, I don't care if I make every human being on this earth an enemy. I don't care if I upset every single human being on this earth, and I don't give a dang if I end up making every human being on this earth an enemy of mine or the enemy of the kingdom of heaven in regard to certain topics. I don't care. If I have to speak and I have to do it the way I do it to get the point across to make sure stupid people get it, then guess what? I will do so. If I have to be harsh in it, then so be it. That does not make me above you. I am nowhere above you in any way in the word, in the regards of the word of God. But what I will tell you is this. There's a lot of people. So, God-given many who are afraid or refuse to speak the word of God, how it should be or how it is meant to be. There's a time and place for everything to be done underneath the sun. A time to love, a time to cry, a time to mourn, a time for peace, a time for war, a time to hate. And in this regard, a time to speak in a loving, compassionate format, and a time to speak hellfire and brimstone. And I think the church has forgotten the fact that there is a place, point in time for every God-given thing, everything to be done underneath the sun. Not just some, but every. What I need and what I want to see is the church to wake up. That's why I speak the way I speak, because the church is too afraid to do it. The church doesn't want to do it in fear of losing their pulpits. The church doesn't want to speak or preach in the way that I'm doing it because they're afraid of losing the people that are in their church because they're afraid that if they're too harsh, they're going to hurt the feelings of the sensitive folk, guys and gals. And that's just a simple truth. I'm not afraid of losing people from a pulpit because guess what? I don't own a pulpit and I don't have a pulpit. I don't own a church and I don't know if I want a church of my own. I don't think I can do it. I don't think I have the tolerance or the patience to want to run a dadgum church. What are you doing here? But I have no problem being the man to speak it, to preach it, and to tell it how it is. Because I'm not afraid of people. Why should I be? Anything you can do to me you can't destroy my soul. There is nothing on this earth through demonic I means or otherwise that you can do to me to make me long fear before you. you have the chance. There is only one person, is one on being, that can destroy I'm both my physical being and my eternal being. And While you and no one on this earth and no demonic observe. practicing 
witchcraft, or worshipping fools are capable of destroying my soul. Only God himself is capable of that. So I don't fear you just because of that solid reason and fact. You have no authority and you have no power to do any of that. You know, I had my mother a good while back tell me that if you love the Middle East so much because of who who created it, who made it, and uh, who lives there, then why don't you go live there? Because my mom didn't like the way I spoke the word of God because honestly, I love my mother, but realistically, she's too sensitive to what a hellfire and brimstone preacher can do and be. She's too sensitive to that. She'd rather have sugary sweet words fed to her. And sadly, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to tell you how it is. And if you don't like it, I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. And honestly, I'm not going to condemn my own soul because I sugary preach a sugary, sugary water preached to someone and tickled their ear and told them false information and false facts of the word of God. I refuse and I will not do it. So, um, if someone else wants to condemn their entire soul and being and be judged extremely harshly by God, then be my guest and do so. But I will not, and I'm not going to. My mother told me I should go live in the Middle East if I love how they do things and how they are and how they deal with sinners and deal with certain abominations and lifestyles. My mother told me exactly that. I told you, you know what, I would, but there's one barrier holding me back. And I'm not going to spend the next 10 years of my life learning a language I don't know how to speak. Sorry, folks, but if I could, I would. But ultimately, I'd want to do so as a missionary, and nothing more, nothing less. I would not want to bring in a prophet from that. I want to literally be a missionary of the kingdom of heaven. For the solid, simple fact of that. But because I cannot speak... Aramaic or even the forgotten Hebrew tongue or anything of the above it, it's pointless for me to sadly try to go over there yeah well a good chunk of them may know how to speak the English language there's also a lot of them that I don't know if they know how and no that is not me being cruel or mean it's just I have enough understanding and enough respect that I should probably know how to learn at least their language if I go to their nation. But ultimately, I'm 33, and I'm not going to waste the next 10 years of my life trying to learn another language when I have better things I can be doing. And learning another language is not a moment. So I would have to be blessed by God and the Holy Spirit for the capability of interpreting tongues and um, speaking in tongues to be able to even remotely have any part to do with it. But that is not a gift that I'm aware I have. And it's sad enough to admit that I don't even know what my spiritual God-given gifts are. I don't know what the fruits of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit that I have are. I've never had it told to me. People can tell me one thing, but I don't know. All I know how to do is speak the word of God in the right context, in the right way, in the right format, no matter who it upsets. And that's all I know how to do, realistically and sadly. I've been told that that in itself is a gift. I, must regrettably confirm that I don't know how it's a gift because, well, to be honest, every believer in Christ is expected to know how to preach and teach someone the word of God. Everyone is expected to know how to do that.